Hello and welcome to episode six of Getting It Right. Award yourself points for everything you get right and let us know if you beat today's contestants. Let's meet our very interesting contestants. Diana, tell us all about you. Hello, my name is Diana Nicholson. Um, I'm a very close to 77 year old retired physiotherapist. Oh. But I also work um, part time seasonally. Uh, at a local stately home as a house guide. Oh, how lovely. So is, is this a volunteering basis? Um, not entirely. Oh, no. they give you money then, Diana, do they? <laughs> Excellent. Keep that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you enjoy history and antiques? I never did until I was there. Right. I, and now I love it. I really enjoy it. Brilliant. So this is what you do for fun? Yes. Okay, and, and do you collect antiques in any way? No, nope, not really. Brilliant. You're on the right show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, star sign. Libra. Libra. Yeah. Okay, what do you know about Libras? Nothing. You're doing no research I, I, at all. I don't even know We're my very honest. balanced. We're very balanced. Are you balanced? No. All right. <laughs> You're a Leo. I am. Yeah, you said that. He's a Leo. Okay. Excellent, Dinah. Lovely to meet you. And now we have Tim. Hello, Tim. Tell Hello. us all about you. Have, have uh, you got a dog collection here, Tim? Yeah, I've got two dogs, but I love a bit. Um, <laughs> I'm Tim Whitehouse, I'm from Thornton Cleveland, latterly, um, ex-Royal Navy engineer. Oh, right. Went on to manage property with the BBC and the Science Museum, and then I emigrated to Canada. Wow. Where I managed real estate there for the federal government. Wow, and wh when did you find yourself back in the UK? Well, I retired to Thailand. Right. And <laughs> met Wad, my wife. Oh, lovely. And, Hello, Wad. And um, we came back. 2018. Right. Happy to be back in the UK? Yeah, very much so. Brilliant. And yes. where have you travelled from today? Thornton Cleveland. Which is how far away? Oh, it's near Blackpool, so it's oh, about, wow. what, 150 miles, is it? Quite a way, Something David. Yeah. I'm quite pleased. Well, we're worth a visit, aren't we? I think we're worth a visit. Well, I Tim will let us know at the end of the show. <laughs> well, very good to see you. Thank you. And star sign? Pisces. Pisces. Okay. Yes. I have no idea. I don't even know why I mentioned it. And age, Tim, did you oh, say? Oh, 68. 68. Okay, here we go then. Make your minds up. Who's going to be the best player? Let's... Diana. Oh, do, do you think so? <laughs> yes. Already. Why? Well, you work in the business. Yes. <laughs> We've got a format to follow here. This is now round one. Are you ready? Sorry. Yes. Link. When do you choose these two? No, you do. Oh, for goodness sake. I just say yes to everybody. Right, let's play round one. Okay, Glamorous Assistant, please, what do we have? Again. And this, I think, we will hand to Tim, oh. please. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, so rules of the game here, Diana, is this. Tim is going to have a look at this object, and he's going to tell us all about it. He's going to speak as he thinks, and Diana, please don't say a word as yet. Your time will come. <laughs> Well, looking at it, it looks like a biscuit barrel. And Is I'm there any biscuits in there? Because Unfortunately very not, no. And I'm going to go for pewter, but I'm not certain on that. It's, I don't, it's not hallmarked. Ah, uh, no, you see, on getting it right, you've got to be certain to win a point, haven't you? Then I'm, going for, yeah. I'm going for pewter. Okay. Show and to me. my... Wow, it's a good-looking thing. Date-wise... I've got a feeling it's 1920-ish. 1920-ish. And yes. where was it made, Tim? I'm going to narrow it down and say Scotland. But wow. the UK anyway. I'll go for the UK. OK. That's quite involved and very confident. It's quite, quite good. Really? Well, don't give any oh, help to Diana. <laughs> oh, I'm just going <laughs> Right, Diana. Over to you. What did Tim get right? What did he get wrong? Uh, Scotland. He got Scotland wrong? I think so. Okay, where was it made? Uh, Scandinavia. Scandinavia? Both begin with S. <laughs> okay, uh, and what is it? Um, a lidded container. And is it for biscuits? Why not? I think, well, you could put anything in it. What it's... I don't know what its original um, use would have been. Tea? 
T. That's interesting. David's not writing. There's always a no, no, I was watching. That. <laughs> when he's not writing, okay. you're doing really badly. I I would uh, agree with. Uh, uh, he's called Tim. Tim. Uh, I would say Art Deco and Scandinavian. And so, what period would that be if it's Art Deco? The early, the first quarter of the twentieth century. Wow. Okay. These two seem to think they're very good. I don't know how good yes. they are, David. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold that <laughs> thought. Like good, good. Don't get too carried away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see how many points we can win. David, over to you. Talk so me through it. It is a pewter biscuit box, designed by a Manx designer called Archibald Knox, Ooh. for Liberty in Coin London. Oh, how delicious! It's around 1905, so it's Art Nouveau, Arts and Crafts rather than Deco. Um, very highly collectible, highly collectible. Okay, Lovely very thing. good. I don't think they did that badly. Award some points, I've, Tim first. I've given Tim two points because he said pewter and he said biscuit barrel. Okay, okay, so he's one point for saying pewter and biscuit. <laughs> Is that it? We said, yeah, he identified what it was. Okay, very good. And Diana? Uh, no points. No points? No, because the, oh, the, the date was too broad. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, Diana, it's I'm okay. disappointed for you. Me too. Because I was Me buying too. into what you were saying. Okay. <laughs> Zero yeah. points for Diana. But don't worry, Diana yeah, can good. really claw back now because this is the valuation round. If you can pick up your pens and cards and write down on the card one price. How much is this Liberty not? Pewter Art Nouveau biscuit box worth. If you know anything about this period, you know that is drop dead gorgeous. There's a bit of a tip, I think. Mm. Okay, so Tim looked at it first. Tim, what's it worth? Four hundred pounds. Mm. Four hundred pounds. Diana, six hundred and fifty. Uh, really Dan? good. Re who's good? They're both close. Um, Tim's closest. Is he? 450. 450 well pounds. Done. Give Tim a round of applause. <laughs> Your wife is going crazy. <laughs> She's wild. She's wild for you, Tim. Wild for you. Okay. Oh, well, well, well. <laughs> we got lucky. Uh, lucky. Not in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're you in for a know. night tonight, Tim, I can tell you. you. Never right. Know. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> right. So, points then. Tim gets one. Yes. Okay. And Dinah. Doesn't get any no. Diana, honestly. I know. Okay. Shock. I'm terrible. At the end of round one, we have Diana on zero, and we have Tim on three points. Oh, well done. <laughs> Very well done, Tim. Thank Come you. back for round two. Welcome back to round two. Glamorous assistant, what do we have? It's very small. And this one, please, to Diana. Right, Tim, not a word from you, please. Diana, what have we got? On first glance, I have no idea. Um, I haven't brought my specs with me. I can't read this. Ah. Uh, it's got a crest on the front. Um, I don't know whether this opens or not. Give it a go. David won't mind. <laughs> That's stuck over there. Can you open it? What do you think it does? No, does it have a purpose? Ah, something's happening here. Steady. Don't say that. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? I thought at first that was um, maybe a, a bulb, uh, but it's not. It's a, you can press this down, which closes it again. Why? But what does it do? Apart from that, which seems a bit useless to me. It does. It, seem, it doesn't seem very helpful. It says something or other's patent. Um, I, I'm really at a loss with this. There are, it, the wooden surround um, looks as if it might be of uh, walnut or mahogany. Um, it's a patented design, so... When was it made? 
1930s. And you don't know what it was made for? No, I've got no idea. David, you're very good at choosing these objects. Right, I have good ones. No so. idea. I think. Oh, wait, is there a. I don't know. There's another. It looks as if there's another hinge. Okay, I think but you I'm, haven't worked this one out, Diana, I because. I have not worked this out. We, we try and keep these shows to about half an hour, Diana. <laughs> so I think we might just move over to Tim, shall we? It'll be antique by the time we're finished. Yeah. I'll be glad to get even one point on that. OK, I don't think you'll be getting one point, to be honest. I but anyway, see him right Tim, over <laughs> to you. Oh, sorry, David. <laughs> We've got dogs everywhere. My first thought when I saw it, I think the wood's mahogany, but... Sorry. My first thought was a snuff box, but... What does he do? Can he? Oh, he's done oh, something. Yeah. He's done something, everybody. But I don't think it is a snuff box. I said, steady, Tim. Show, show it to me. What do you think it is then? Let's keep it nice and still. Let's get in. Let's see if the viewers at home can work this out. Keep it there and then turn it around nice and slowly. Does that metal thing open up to Well, it says push. So I don't know whether well, why you, push don't you push it then. I'm <laughs> pushing it, pulling it, squeezing it. <laughs> David Elster, what Ste have you done? Steady. <laughs> so I think they've glued the top on. David's cunningly glued the top okay. on. Okay. Like, can I just have a look at yeah. that? I think everybody is flummoxed, David. You've yes. flummoxed them completely, including the dog. Listen to it. Yeah. I know. Would yeah. you like me to open it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I wondered if you put stamps in it. Right. So, so. Oh, oh, no. what? oh, oh, it's a. It's a travelling ink well. Good grief! How interesting is that, David? Tell us more about that. That's fascinating. Mm. Uh, nine, probably date-wise, nineteenth century. Um, well, lovely wooden frame on it. Probably is walnut or mahogany. So I awarded you each a point for that because I was getting desperate. Um, <laughs> I know, it's going to be a very long show. Um, I think you both noticed that it's a painted design by Ransoms. So this has been you know, owned by a gentleman who was travelling around a lot. Um, on his travels, he's writing on a, on a train or something and he'd get his travelling inkwell out and his yeah. quill. So it keep the ink nice and secure. Yeah. It's not going to spill all over his trousers or inside his travelling writing box. Very clever design. It's a lovely thing. Now, Rabbit. painted it, which is interesting because during the 19th century, there's lots of patents for things that really were not that necessary yes. because we already had travelling inkwells, didn't yeah. we? So it's just a bit of a fun novelty thing. Okay, really badly done, if you yes. don't mind me saying so. <laughs> well, <laughs> Award some points. Um, one Help each, you. just because of the timber, they identify the timber, walnut mahogany. What, they could tell it was wood? You're giving them a point <laughs> well, for that? they did say walnut or mahogany, so... You know, Unbelievable. I was getting okay. bored, so I want to do something. <laughs> One point each, oh, which is you. actually a result for you, Diana. It is yes. a result for me, yes. Boosted our confidence. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She's broken a duck. Give her a round of applause. So we have Diana on one, and we have Tim on four, but this is the valuation round. Uh -huh. Now you know exactly what it is. Pick up your cards and your pens. Can we ask any more questions? No, you can ask no more questions, because we don't have all day, Diana. Right. <laughs> Write one figure down on the back of the card. What do you reckon? Will it be any good at this? I think not. it'll be high. Yes. You think it'll be high? Ah, OK. Let's go then, Tim first. £130. Diana, £75. Who? Its value is £30. Oh. £30. It's not much, is it? No. Not much at all. It's remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> well, I can announce, guess who gets a point? Diana, well do you agree? Yeah. Closest to it. Well, well done. done. She's making a comeback. OK, brilliant. OK, so after round two, we have Diana on two and Tim on four. So come back for round three. This is Tea and History. Well, this is Tea and History. And you know that history and antiques are inextricably linked. Learn about antiques, you learn about history. So this is a brief history lesson from the 18th century. Diana, 
did you know that during the 18th century, our Georgian ancestors loved false eyebrows? I didn't. You didn't know it? Well, I'm going to tell you something very interesting, because they did. And a very good reason for that, David, is this. The makeup that they were wearing, that white face paint, that they called face paint, not make up, was very gloopy and it was made very expensively, so only the super rich could really afford it. And one of the reasons why it was so expensive is because it was made using mercury and lead. Very expensive ingredients, but pretty nasty ingredients too. So it had some side effects. So you were looking pretty drop dead gorgeous. You would look amazing. You would, with white makeup on it. Really be a big improvement. White makeup, <laughs> painted on the face. Side effect, you lose your hair. You also have eruptions in the skin. So the more eruptions you have, Diana, what do you do when you put your makeup on, you have an eruption in your skin, what do you do? You put more makeup on, which makes it worse. Your hair falls out, so you put a wig on. But not only the hair on your head, your eyebrows fall out, but not perfectly. They kind of are a bit mangy. So you've got to pluck your eyebrows and then paint them in using burnt cork Try show a bit of interest if you can too. No, I'm, I'm, I'm no. just yeah. thinking this. I mean, yeah. yeah, good. Oh, you just you're going to plan it on Saturday night, yes. are you? Right. Okay. Burnt I cork, <laughs> paint them in, or soot from a lamp. The downside to this is that when you go out and you're doing a bit of disco dancing, you sweat, and all the black runs, <laughs> runs down, down your face. Down. Not a good look. No. So, the great option then was this bearing in mind that most Georgian homes were full of rodents, mice and rats. So you'd catch a mouse, kill it, skin it, dry the fur out, and then trim out some beautifully shaped eyebrows and stick them on your head using animal fat. No, yes, what a great idea and environmentally friendly. The Georgians were environmentally friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they would do. They loved their animals, the Georgians, and here comes the question. And it's animal related because getting it right has become basically a dog kettle. So we love our dogs on this show. And, just to, and the British have always loved their dogs. And the Georgians used to love dogs and cats. They loved them a lot, had, had, yeah, had them as pets as we do. But they also had another favorite pet. And this is the question. What other pets did the Georgians have in their home? Very many Georgians, and here is the clue. It's a, it's a British indigenous animal, and if we went outside now in Ripon and we looked around, we no doubt would see one. So there is your question. Okay. What did the Georgians love to keep as a pet, apart from dogs and cats? Write, write your down. answer on the back of a card. An indigenous animal to Britain. Do you know this? No. No? I don't think so. I hope I don't start a new craze here. <laughs> oh, don't look, right. don't look. I didn't look at oh, Britain. No. Oh, you've written it down? Okay, yeah. you've got your answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll go Diana first. A ferret. A ferret. <laughs> a ferret. <laughs> Were you laughing at? <laughs> Oh, you could be right. Then. That's good, though. It's a good answer. A ferret. What have you got? A squirrel. Yes. Oh, my goodness me. Give One of him oh. a round of applause. Really? Oh. Thank you. It's a squirrel. By all accounts, you can train a squirrel like you can train a dog. And the Georgians would be seen walking through the parks. <laughs> They'd be seen walking with their squirrels through the, through the parks. But remember, it wouldn't be a grey squirrel. Grey squirrels weren't introduced until about, I think, the 1870s. OK, welcome back to round four. This is the final round, Antiques Expert round. Um, assistant Glamorous One, please. What, oh, goodness gracious me. What is that? And over to the contestants, please. Oh, watch, you think she'd realise by now. The, watch the head, please. <laughs> watch the head. <laughs> oh, he's worried. OK, in this round, you don't have to say a word. You need to share the piece between you. Have a good look at it. Take the head in case okay. we... Right. David Elstop is going to tell you all about it and then ask you a question. So this is a biscuit jar, tobacco box tobacco jar, I guess, either or, uh, made of pottery, what's often described as a wally bird, 
and it is a copy of a piece made by some very famous Victorian art potters. When was it made, David? The original would be made in the second half of the 19th century. This has probably been made sometime during the middle of the 20th century. I would like to know the name of the Victorian potters who made the original. So this is a copy of that famous that maker. If a genuine piece, it would be worth 20 or 30,000. And as it is, what's it worth today as a copy of that genuine piece? Probably around 100 pounds. Okay, okay. Any thoughts, you two? Are you feeling relatively confident? Any names? No. These names? potters were very well known for producing grotesque yes. pieces of art pottery. My mind has gone completely blank, but I do know that there was a similar one on Antiques Roadshow, which went for about 20,000. There was. That must have been. But I cannot remember the no, name. I, I saw that too. Okay. I don't remember the You name. don't remember the name no. either. Okay. Something no. like Wallace, but maybe not. Pen was that the, why it was called a Wally Bird? Uh, I'm not sure. David, just so you know, that was a really rubbish question. Was it? Yeah, because they haven't got a clue. Where do we go? Yeah, no, but I should have. We're trying to create, it. I should know. We're trying to create something educational and <laughs> yes. knowledgeable here. Well, <laughs> we're going to reveal <laughs> the answer. And then I think David's going to have to think on the hoof and come up with another question. But let us know if you get this right. Announce the name you're searching for. It's the Martin Brothers. That's it. Martin oh, yeah. oh, he gets it right now. Well, I said I've forgotten it. I yeah. did I know, know it. I saw yeah. We're supposed to be getting knowledgeable people on the show. You promised me knowledgeable yeah. people. And I've been yeah. trying. We've let you down, David. Okay, okay. Listen, I'm used to it. This is episode number six. Right. <laughs> We've got another three to go in this series. Yeah. Okay, so you got that wrong. But I think to spice it up a bit, what are we... <laughs> can we think of another question? That we can get What's right. Yes. Have you got another question? How about then... A qu how about this as a question, David? Where... Were the original Martin Brother pieces made? Okay. Okay, um, I think that's. Don't answer yet, Dinah. Okay. Where were they made? In which country were the Martin Brothers pieces made? Pick up your pens and cards. Let's hope we can get a sensible answer out of this one. I bet the people on YouTube got that right. I bet they did. Let yeah. us know if you got yeah. it right. And by the way, if you've got an original Martin Brothers bird like this let us know because we'll feature Please it do. we'll definitely feature we will. it right do we have our answers and tim england london and diana england david two points for tim one for diana two points for tim london england diana gets one and point least it's one it's one point. <laughs> okay don't go away the final score is this tim is on seven oh. points and Diana trailing, but she was making a comeback. Diana, <laughs> three points. Oh, Round of applause, didn't they do well? <laughs> Don't go away, because here comes your very special question. And here it is. Put your answers down below. If you get it right, you may well be getting a getting it right signed mug. The very first object we looked at was a beautiful biscuit barrel made by Archibald Knox. Superb quality thing, retailed through liberties. It is drop dead gorgeous. What period does this thing represent? Is it Art Deco or Art Nouveau? Answers down below, and you may well be a winner. Thanks for watching, everybody. Come back for episode seven. Well done, you two. Well done. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 Well done, yeah.